I can't count how many times people have left just because they were like, weren't given an opportunity to succeed or they didn't have somebody to like lead them through those next steps. And so we want to help bridge that gap. We realize that not every dealership or business has actual capable leadership to not just help people navigate the, the sales side of things or maybe the marketing side of things, but actually like how to grow, how to, how to become more, like how to get excited and take ownership of what you do inside the dealership, whatever that may be. Welcome to the Strategy with Jason podcast. Tune in for everything you need to know to stay in the know regarding the automotive industry. Here's your host, Jason Harris. Hey, 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 what's going on, Podcast Nation? It is Jason Harris here, and thank you for joining another episode of Strategy with Jason. Today, I am joined by the one, the only, the oh-so-famous Mr. Bill Playford. <laughs> Bill, what's up? How you doing, man? I'm great. I brought my camp shirt. I brought my sunshine, as you can see coming in here. It's a, a rare sunny day in Michigan, and I'm just happy to share everything with the universe today. Well, I'm excited, man, because we get to talk about summer camp <laughs> and specifically the dealer knows summer camp that's coming up here pretty shortly, man. It's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. you know, it's coming up. I am excited when when you reached out to me originally you go hey we got this idea we're gonna do this summer camp do you want to come and i'm like <laughs> you had me at summer camp <laughs> um like i just all the memories man i had of summer camp and just the fun things but i just and and i love the fact that you guys kind of chose this type of like theme you know because i think some of the best connections i ever made you know growing up probably happened at summer camp you know there's just Mm -hmm. I know there's something about the outdoors and there's just something about, you know, being, you know, uh, being in a cottage and just kind of, you know, walking around the property and, you know, flipping over a canoe with somebody. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. It just gets to you, you know, so. The, the hazing part, maybe not so much as <laughs> other things, but, but yeah. Wait, it, wait, wait, come on, Bill. You tell me there's going to be no hazing in this. <laughs> I don't think we can do it. Um, but we had to sign a bunch of waivers to make sure people don't drown. Remember, we have a bunch of executives who will be coming to this. So uh, people not getting hurt, a big priority. So, uh, but seriously, like this is a concept we've, um, we've been thinking about for more than a decade. And, um, you know, Joe and I uh, talked about over the years and just, um, you know, for whatever reason, we couldn't find the right venue or just the right kind of mix of things. And, um, but we just decided like everything kind of came together and we should just do it, especially after COVID happened and, and kind of mm -hmm. uh, really changed people's outlook on things and kind of maybe dampen the conferences a little bit, maybe a little bit. I don't know. Um, we just wanted to offer up something different. Um, we've spoken at so many conferences, like, you know, we ran into each other at conferences from time to time, Jason, like, you know, that's kind of like the same formula <laughs> and it's not it's not to like besmirch any of those conferences. They've done a lot of, you know, good for the industry and they brought a lot of people together. Uh, but at the same time, like, I think they've, they've sort of created a bit of a, of a formula where people just aren't interacting with the material like they used to, you know, that's much, much more about the, you mean, it's, sort of you mean Bill, it's not the same content over and over, just rinse and repeat. What? Yeah. I want to go there. Well, that, that also, then I'm also part of that problem, <laughs> but and, and we do a different presentation to every conference we've ever gone to ever. Just so you know, maybe the, maybe four slides get recycled. But um, but in any event, um, we just want to like create an environment where people can build that community and, and minimize those distractions and make it less about uh, you know being in Vegas and and all the bright lights or or just like at NADA gotcha. in Dallas. There were so many people that just you know really were just too much, too much complaining about the venue and the city and stuff like that, and there wasn't really mention of the content. You know, we, we feel like there's an opportunity to create, uh, you know, one, an environment where people can get bored. You know what I mean? That's part of the summer camp experience, right? Like you're not completely <laughs> dazzled by stuff. And I feel like you have to sort of, uh, today, especially with all the beeps and all the stuff we have with our electronics and our phones and everything, like we have to be able to tune all that stuff out so we can focus. You know, and you're, to your point, you got to tune it out. You got to focus. And you're right. The content... Um, I was actually looking at this because, you know, when we got off this phone and we, me and my team were talking about this and we just got to talk about events in general. And I was like, I realized I've been to 47 automotive conferences. Yeah, it's crazy. And 
you know, when, 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 when I think back to, you know, what were the things I actually enjoyed, you know, about, you know, about these conferences, it was the content and the connection. So I can go back mm -hmm. like, this year, the content was amazing. You know, Brent Wees did a presentation, he kid rocked it. It was awesome. You know, and that year I, I remember, you know, Jim Ziegler was, you know, at his best, you know, and he was just on fire on, on the stage. Mm -hmm. You know, I always agree with him, but it's cool. Uh, <laughs> You know, but well, we want to talk about Bud Light and him. So, uh, uh, but we, uh, but yeah, and that's we want to kind of reboot that part of the conference experience. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and I want to, I want to make sure I'm very clear. I met my get bored is like when we're kids, and you know, when you and I are close to the same age, but like we had like an hour of cartoons a day. You know, maybe depending on what was on the four channels, it was a cartoon, then it was Phil Donahue or whatever, but because of that we were outside we were making up games like if somebody had a ball like you could make a score and and then you find you're having a lot more fun doing that or you're you know jumping your bike off of things you shouldn't be jumping your bike off but i mean <laughs> it's it's those experiences where like that creativity comes out and that that bond that you make with those kids in your neighborhood about the crazy game you just made up like all that comes from like decluttering all those other um things that we're worrying about and especially when it comes to conferences like i don't know what you like i've I, maybe I haven't been to 47 i have to sit and count I've, I've definitely been to dozens and like they all kind of devolve into the same thing and it, it's kind of hard to differentiate sometimes from year to year well because it, it's, it's, it's the so same familiar. hotel yeah. model and mm -hmm. the same you know it's, i think it's, it has what it has to do with the environment mm -hmm. um you know i'm like one thing i, I love being out in nature i i, I mm -hmm. love it's it, i actually find that i can absorb more i feel more connected uh there's mm -hmm. something that that's to that that's to be said about not being in this recycled air stale you know hotel you know conference room in environment that mm -hmm. you know i think kind of just not just opens you up from a comfort level, but also just, you know, also from just, uh, it opens up your mind to just kind of absorb me. I absorb more, 100%. you know, 100%. and, and I think that's amazing. And I think, you know, for out, anybody out there watching and listening, we want you guys to come to summer camp, you know, with us and there's going to be some amazing connections, going to be some amazing, you know, content, but you know, to your point, Bill, I think you guys did an amazing job of just saying, this is going to be different. It's going to be different. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be content and connections, but it's going to be in, in a different environment. I mean, I gotta be honest with I, 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 if I got to go to Vegas one more time, I'm going to put a hole in my head, man. Like it's, it's too much. It's sensory overload. There's things going on all the time. There's not a moment where I get to rest or relax because somebody wants to hit the crap tables. Or somebody wants to go to the really good sushi yeah. restaurant. Another person wants to go to the, you know, the bourbon and cigar place. You know, it's just like, I, I love this. I'm so yeah, excited. It, 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 well, it's like FOMO on steroids, but they, like, we're not going though to get entertained and that's the problem. Exactly. Right? So, They're there to learn. So, but we'll go back to your point about something too, about that, that connections part. And I think that's another thing that we just are very, very intentional with, with this conference is that we want to create an environment where people can get back to working with their peers, building networks of people that they can count on in the industry. Uh, a lot of us that came up when we did sort of at the, you know, late nineties, early two thousands, when we were in real retail, like I feel like we're like our own little kind of uh, tribe, you know, like the, in like South America or Africa that's never been touched by anyone. You know what I mean? And, and, and we had that kind of connection with each other because we were all doing the same things. And so we relied on each other and we shared notes and we talked about our techniques. We weren't scared uh, that somebody's going to steal what we know or something like that. And, and I, and I just feel like, like that part of my conference experience certainly has gone away. I think the other part too, is that, interaction with the speakers and, uh, you know, presenters and outside of just the, you know, the vendor personnel that are at the booth, people don't have access like they used to. And I remember back in the day, like, you know, that's how Joe and I met. He was a speaker. I was working at a tech company at the time and we just headed off, started talking at the bar or whatever, because that's where everyone went after everybody learned, they took notes, uh, they did their thing. Everybody got together and went to dinner together and hung out the bar together and we just sort of take over a place. And, and those are just some of the, the conversations that people remember. They may not remember about uh, Brent Weiss, who's like one of my best friends. <laughs> like They may not remember what he said on stage, but they might remember him from going to a party and having, you know, having dinner with him or something like that and actually spending an evening with him. 
um, we want to create that same opportunity for people. And, and, and having a speaker such as yourself, you know, you're going to be there as well. Uh, it's, it's giving people access to people like you, you know, who have questions like that, who in a, you know, 30 or 45 minute long, like Ted style, you know, Ted style talk, <laughs> you know, presentation, um, they may not get it all, you know, or they're That's like me and their, their brain starts whirling about, okay, what would I do with this? And you kind of miss some things like you can talk afterwards and, and you can have lunch later. And you can you know what, drink later at night. I think some of the best conversation bill is going to happen around that fire pit. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I think, you know, there's, there's one thing to kind of get out the idea in a 30 minute conversation, a 30 minute talk. All right. Mm -hmm. But then to really kind of dive into it collectively in a small huddle around, around a fire with a, maybe a little bit of my favorite scotch, but um, yeah. no, just <laughs> you have to bring your own blast for the scotch. If it's, yes. <laughs> it's something above plastic bottle scotch. No, I'm just kidding. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, we'll have good bourbon there. Let's, though, talk, let's, let you, <laughs> let's go down that because man, um, I looked at the roster. I mean, mm -hmm. dude, you put a roster together. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, I, there are some serious heavy hitters and some A players in there and some people that I admire, um, not just because of their knowledge, but their willingness to, 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 to give, um, uh, beyond just the knowledge. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's very much so of just like, here's everything I know, take it, you know, yeah. and you brought some amazing people. So, you know, what are some of the, I'm curious, just from your perspective, what are some of the people that you're, I mean, I know there's a lot, you got a lot, so I know you can't pick favorites, mm -hmm. but I'm asking, which ones are you looking forward to? I, um, I mean, just to kind of lay out the philosophy Not, outside like, of mine, outside of mine, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, See, I have the advantage to be able to call you if I have an issue. Like with with all these people, it's been nice because over the years, like I have people I can I can count on with questions that I can't answer. I mean, uh, you know, you've just because you're a speaker or you're kind of labeled as an you know, SME in your field doesn't mean that you don't need help. And I feel like we've, you know, really built a lot of people up over the years in terms of a network, but people that that we trust for ideas or just to, you know, bounce something off of or it's like, hey, is this legit? That's a lot of it sometimes just to confirm our own, you know, kind of BS meter on certain things. But like, I think on the vehicle acquisition side, I think that's just going to be fire because mm -hmm. we have, yeah. you know, two of the, if they're not the biggest, like the basically only two names in this space that do this stuff um, day in and day out. And then we have a camp counselor who's like a total OG of, of you know, used car valuations in the market and stuff like that in Jason Rice. And so, you know, it's kind of creating this, you know, sort of triumvirate of, of speakers gives people so much more in terms of depth in, uh, you know, like not to get off on a complete tangent, mm -hmm. but, but what we wanted to do in particular is make sure that we represent different points of view in this conference. And again, just going back to one of the weaknesses we see is that we get a lot of big city we get a lot, a lot of mega dealer, you know, publicly traded auto groups, you know, in Canada, you know, my experience, Probably the same as yours, like, you know, Auto Canada is up there talking and there's so many huge dealer groups up in Canada that it's it's way different than a mom and pop shop, or, you know, or a store like you got used to run back in the day. You know what I mean? Like it and, and not to say that strategically some of those things aren't aren't valuable and some are maybe, but tactically the execution is way different. Uh, so we want to make sure that, you know, we're bringing, you know, kind of diverse thoughts on things. So that way we can reach those sort of up and comers, the kind of one person shows at a dealership and the people who have the enterprise resources. And so the way the content is divided is to have a session for like the limited resource people, you know, the mm -hmm. smaller dealerships who want the limited budget or limited manpower, or limited experience. And then to have another session that's geared more for advanced people or, you know, quote unquote advanced, uh, but have the budget, have, uh, you know, the wherewithal to do you know, things with the resources they have available. But then we also have a counselor that helps sort of tie those things together. And then everybody should walk away with some sort of action plan. So it's also part of the job of the counselors to actually help people build a strategy so that when, when a dealer, uh, you know, uh, attendee goes back, like they have something they can put in motion. So that way we can maximize the, the return on their, their investment. Well, you know, and I actually think that's a good segue kind of into my next question is, is, who should be uh, coming to this event? Because I think many conferences have done a, a decent job of kind of catering to maybe certain mm -hmm. individuals, you know, maybe some some kind of cater to to you know to that middle management, or maybe cater mm -hmm. to more used car, or cater to the fixed op side, um, mm -hmm. you know, and then some cater to owners. So, but but who who's 
who's the ideal individual do you see that really sh- that really is going to get the most out of attending the event? I think anybody who, in my mind, is sort of like that Charlie Hustle. You know, every dealership has that person who is young, they're hungry, uh, they have leadership potential written all over them. Um, and I think then the mentor, you know, the person who's there to to kind of who sees that talent and wants to nurture it. And I got to tell you, like, not every dealership on the continent is going to be that way. But, you know, we really want to focus on the next generation. We feel like that, you know, the kind of Gen Xers and boomers of the world have kind of are having their way, you know, with things right now. Uh, and in a way, it kind of creates a little bit of contagion for people who come up in the, in the business, especially if they don't look like, uh, somebody or sound like somebody who works at a dealership. And that's just a major issue. And I think, um, you know, I can't speak for you, but, you know, after working with, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dealerships, just all over, like I said, the whole continent, you know, whether it's in Toronto or Tampa, um, you know, the, the individuals that are coming to work at dealerships are, are way different personality wise. Yes. And a lot of, uh, a lot of folks in, in leadership are having a hard time contending with that. They don't, they can't incentivize the younger employees and things of that nature. And in, you know, after, I mean, we've worked with something like well over 1200 BD agents in the last uh, 10, 11 years. Like it's a lot. I, 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 could, I could give you an exact number, but I, I, I mean, it's a lot. And uh, I, I, I can't, I, think- I can't count how many times people have left just because they were like, weren't given an opportunity to succeed or they didn't have somebody to like lead them through those next steps. And so we want to help bridge that gap. We realize that not every dealership or business has actual capable leadership 100%. to not just help people navigate the, the sales side of things or maybe the marketing side of things, but actually like how to grow, mm-hmm. how to how to become more, like how to get excited and take ownership of what you do inside the dealership, whatever that may be. And so that's why we're having um, sessions on like culture, like you know, actually corporate culture and sessions on management and leadership and bringing in people who are subject matter experts in their own right to help uh, dealerships navigate that, including actual dealers uh, who have dealerships and are doing these things uh, on their own to try to do these things. And they realize that it's not an overnight thing. Like Toyota did not become Toyota overnight, right? It took, you know, decades and decades and decades of, of very conscientious planning to do what they are, are lauded for today. And the companies that we look at today as big brands, like, you know, Apple, it's not new, you know, Nike, it's not new. Like it's something those, those sort of um, emotional things we associate with those companies started decades ago and they just grew and grew and grew because they had a pipeline of talent, that a pipeline of leadership who nurtured that talent and it it built those brands up. And I feel like that, and that's kind of fundamentally changed. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I just recently read a stat that, you know, prior prior to COVID, the uh, average new hire at a dealership had about three years worth of experience when they came to work at a, at a dealership. I mean, they've been mm-hmm. in the business for a little while. You know, uh, from my understanding now, the current stat is less than a year. I believe uh, it. New hires today coming into the dealership has less than a year of experience in in automotive, you know, and so, and that's an average. So that means there's probably some that have quite a few and then a ton that have zero, you know? So, and, and, and and Bill, I think the other thing I, you and Joe did an amazing job is that how accessible you've, you've made this, you know? Um, now I I am excited to fly in and I know there's a little bit of a drive, but I actually excited (laughs) about that part. You know, I I actually think it's going to be fun. I do, I do like that part, but accessible in the sense of the pricing. Because, yeah. you know, I just think if I want to sit down and really get some one-on-one on the impressive roster of people that you guys have assembled, um, I would have to go to a digital dealer, Tampa. I'd have mm-hmm. to go to an NADA, all right? And just not just the cost of getting there, but also just the cost of my hotel, just the cost yeah. of the tickets. I mean, you know, it's just it can be thousands and thousands of dollars just to attend an event, but there's so many people, I'll never get that intimate connection like I'm going to get here. So here I can come and let's talk a little bit about this. How much, you know, is it going to cost for someone, you know, to attend the event? So, you know, I'm glad you you brought that up because like one of our old taglines we came up with when I first joined Dealer Knows and kind of adds Dealer Knows today, like we always felt like training should never be a luxury. And that was always one of the things we'd say. And it's almost kind of like an internal tagline we'd remind ourselves because, 
Um, you know, when I was in retail, there was very few internet trainers and uh, very few sales trainers. They all charge exorbitant sums of money to this day. Like it makes me blush uh, what some sales trainers will charge for just a day's worth of, of material, uh, especially knowing full well that the people there are only going to retain like 20 minutes of it uh, anyway. You know what I mean? And that's it you know, like an actual like psychological statistic that you can look up in a journal. Um, so the, um, but the fact matter is, is that we want to uh, make this so that really anybody could attend. And that's what took so long with the logistics to get this really planned is to try to find a way where we can make it a really inexpensive flight for anybody in the country uh, and make it so that the, the lodging isn't expensive and then actually have a real bona fide summer camp. And so uh, we're just actually just outside of, of Atlanta. It's about, about an hour and a half, two hours from Atlanta, but we're actually handling all the transportation when you're there. So we have a shuttle service. It'll take you to and from the camp and to and from uh, the accommodations. We have a whole uh, hotel that we rented out mostly. I mean, I'd say like probably 85% of it is blocked off uh, for just the attendees for the camp. Uh, so essentially you're going to take over this, this really cool uh, independent hotel that we found in the area. Um, and then we're actually basically making it so that all the meals are covered, all the drinks are covered, all the entertainment's covered. Uh, essentially, all anybody has to do is get themselves there and put themselves up for three days. And it'll be, you know, basically what going to one of the big conferences would cost. Uh, it'll cover everything just for the ticket cost from their conference. So the tickets themselves are just under 500 bucks themselves, which is a fraction mm -hmm. of what you pay at other places. Uh, but then it's also, also all inclusive. So we wanted to make it so that actual people at the dealership can go. It's not something you just throw on your MX card and write off or whatever, but as, as anybody who's been to NADA or, you know, digital dealer or any of the other conferences out there, you know, that you're going to add a couple, couple grand, uh, at least of expenses on top of just yeah. the ticket itself. Um, and, and we just didn't want to put people in that situation. We didn't want to make it so that that was a hurdle to have this experience. And then moreover with that, we wanted to, again, make it so the environment's very inclusive, you know? And so for the people who don't have the budget, uh, their dealership doesn't have the budget to send them somewhere, like they can actually afford to do this out of their own pocket. Um, exactly. So it, it's something where we just, again, wanted to open it up for an, a different audience of people so we can get the people who aren't going to conferences to participate and still get that network, still build those relationships. And hopefully it'll be the catalyst to, you know, kind of build the next generation of, of car dealers. Dude, I'm excited. And uh, when we were talking, when you were when you were talking about the bus ride up there, all I can see in my head is like Joe grabbing a guitar and kind of like bringing us into a sing along as we drive up there. I I really hope that happens. So I can't imagine Joe playing a guitar. So well, let's just start a sing along then. Let's just yeah. let's just see someone doing. That. Yeah. So they're they're not school buses. We got motor coaches, but yeah, we actually have a shuttle, and we're actually working with everybody to sort of you know kind of coalesce their their travel accommodations to minimize that amount of time. But we're, we're, we're trying to think of all the things that are hurdle for most people. In well, a I think you're taking those hurdles and you're going to make them fun. So yeah. like, there we go. It's going to be a fun professional event and Absolutely. with, you know, with, with, with just uh, so much real close connection yeah. that you just don't get at another event. So for, Hey, for everybody out there watching and listening right now, we've talked about this amazing event and then we kind of come to the like, Oh, just tell me when it's going on. Okay, finally, guys. So when is it and where can they buy uh, their tickets right now? So if you go to dealernows.com, dealerknows.com, it's actually, it'll be a pop-up that'll take you right there. And then we actually have a link around the site that'll take you right to the summer camp page. We're, we're making updates all the time. Um, we're still got a few speaking spots that we're, we're trying to fill right now. So we're making updates all the time in terms of content agenda. We just announced our keynotes. So it's something definitely to tune back into. Um, and in the conference itself is between May, uh, it's actually the 23rd through the 25th, but we're actually having a welcome dinner on the 22nd. That's going to, uh, essentially kind of kick things off and we're gonna have karaoke and stuff. Cause we're, we're known for that. And, uh, just to kind of set the tone, but man, I gotta tell you the, just the keynotes we have lined up, I'm super excited. Just uh, having seen some of them before and having heard their message just, uh, prior to this, I think too, it's going to be something completely different. So like April Holmes is a, a Paralympic athlete, gold medal winner, uh, set a world record, first female on the Jordan brand. You know, we're going to have her talk at our conference. Like, how cool is that? And uh, Max Joseph, for some people who may know from, from Google advertising, um, you know, he's going to talk about, you know, 
like leadership and DEI uh, uh, initiatives. Uh, Charlie Wahlberg, uh, he's a South by Southwest speaker. He owns an advertising agency in Detroit. Uh, he, he's done TEDx Detroit for since its inception. Uh, guy's just a force of nature. He's going to be there. Um, we got Bo Pisker, who is uh, completely outside of automotive altogether, actually helped develop the the mobile technology we use today at Motorola uh, and is actually, you know, and, and kind of formed a lot of stuff in, in terms of uh, commanding uh, military, <laughs> you know what I mean. So it's just a a really uh, interesting. And of course, he's like a Harvard, you know, alum and everything else. But but I mean, just the again, it's that diversity of thought, diversity of speakers, and really just trying to bring these things together and bridge all those gaps. I think it's going to really open a lot of eyes, especially as people start talking about it, you know. And I think that's going to be neat. It's going to start those thoughts. And you know, what do you think about that, you know? And those types of conversations. That's what we're hoping to do because that, that's how we're going to make things evolve. That's how we're going to change things. And and we're, I just want to be part of that, man. I want to have a legacy right. of, of keeping it going. So. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you're out there watching, listening right now, you need to go to the website right now. Check it out. Um, I hope to see everyone at summer camp. Uh, Bill, for everybody out there watching and listening right now, uh, what's the best way to connect with you? you shoot me an email, bill at dealernose.com. There we go, guys. You've heard it. Bill. Jason's bringing scotch, too. He said so before we recorded. So. I am, but I am not. I, I know sharing is caring. I just don't care that much. Um, <laughs> Bill. This is uh, Glenn, Georgia. There yeah, this is, uh, I don't know what else that is. Uh, <laughs> Bill, thank you so much for taking the time to jam me today, man. This is a thank lot of you. fun. Really looking forward to seeing you at Cam. Yeah, great, great seeing you again. Uh, thanks for having me join. Appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to the Strategy with Jason podcast with your host, Jason Harris. Don't want to miss new content? Be sure to check out the full podcast library at strategywithjason.com to stay in the know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Happy podcasting.